Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to another movie review for Halloween month. And the time of uh, review, review where we're under one of those uh, killer fish films. Now, this is a film that uh, I saw a couple of times back then. And this just came out on, on honestly, this came out uh, on sci-fi. Of course, why a lot of times in the past I've said about sci-fi and their crappy CGI, especially when it comes when it comes to killer fish films. Bad CGI and all that. Well, the film that I'm reviewing though, granted, yeah, the CGI does not hold up now to, now today. Yeah, even back and from what year was this? 2004. Yeah, the CGI is yeah, the CGI still doesn't hold up today. It's still pretty not good CGI. But Regardless, though, I didn't overall did not mind this film. Hey, I, I found back then from sci-fi, did not mind, and that is of Frankenfish. The Frankenfish came out and premiered in sci-fi on back in two thousand four, and really enough, it's directed by a guy named Mark uh, Mark uh, A Z Dip or Dip. Uh, I guess the last name is, but actually, this is the same guy who go back then directed the nineteen ninety seven film Spawn. Yeah, Spawn from 1997 with Michael Jai White and John Leguizamo, which I I reviewed that while a long time ago. Was not a fan of that movie, but honestly, I felt my from this from this film, I rather wa I, I rather watch this in Spawn. But yeah, I really rather watch this. In, I rather like I like this film better than Spawn, so from this director. But I did not mind this film. Even from back then on sci-fi, but the CGI, yeah, it's still not good CGI. It is not. But I thought our the 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 the, the, the lead the lead guy named uh, Tori Kittles, I thought he uh, did a very decent job as as the lead. He's a guy by the name of um uh what was it, what's his character's name? By the name Sam. He's a medical examiner. He's been sent to Louisiana Swamp, the bayou, to examine um, this uh, dead body that's been chewed up. And he had this, um, he gets, he gets an assistant, uh, the character Mary, by the name of, played by China, China, Ch China Chow, really enough, um, uh, in the name China Chow, um, comes to, comes to, goes to, comes to assist him. They talk to some of the local people that live on these houseboats. And one of actually uh, one of the uh, characters, this character named Elmer, is actually really enough played by Moose Watson. From now, Moose Watson, he's the guy who played Ben Willis from I Know What You Did Last Summer. He was the fisherman, the f and, and from from the, the the first film and the sequel. I still know what you did last summer. So yeah, Moose Watson he played Ben Willis, the fisherman from both those I Know What You Did Last Summer movies. I was like, oh yeah, this guy from I, the who, who that's the fisherman himself from I Know What You Did Last Summer. Or not, he's a, he's a, he plays a fisherman in this film as well. <laughs> and he gets eaten by the fish. Um, and they talk to a, other, lo, other lo, the local people on these uh, houseboats. One guy, but one, one guy whose name is uh, Ricardo, he, he kind of knew that the first victim, he's like, it looks like more of a hunter. Um, this other this other houseboat where the 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 first victim wife and, and daughter lives, like the mother like the mother the the wife does like a little bit of the voodoo stuff, and another one next to it is um there's this see this hippie this hippie couple, and actually the guy who was like the the the, the guy who was like, the hippie and wore the dre who had the dreads, is actually the same guy who was from um the Super Mario Brothers movie, um the guy named Richard Edson. He's from. He was from the Super Mario Brothers movie. He was one of those. Um. He was the two guys, the two the two henchmen of Dennis Hopper. Um, the two guys. The other one was for, was Fisher Stevens. You know, who would go on to play. Um, what was the guy? I forgot the guy's name from. Um, Let, uh, Short Circuit One and Two. He um him that guy Fisher Stevens and this other guy who was with um, Fisher Stevens the, from Super Mario Brothers movie. The two henchmen of Dennis Hopper from that so. It's like, actually okay. I recognize that guy. He was the guy from the Super Mario Bros. movie. So, and they're, they're the guy's asking what's going on, and then um, 
and the guy, um, the, the character Tori Kittles goes to this. Um, they go to this one boat to find to find um, some answers where the stuff is, you know, find any evidence. They find they take some pictures. The guy uh, Moose Watson falls in the water and he gets dragged and he gets dragged by this big fish. And then later on, the guy Richard Edson, you know, he's, he's you know the guy's stoned. You know, he's um smoking a smoking a pot uh. It was the yeah, bong, was it? He sees some of the water and then actually gets, um, gets his head bitten off, <laughs> which is it is a pretty it is a pretty gory um, some pretty gory deaths really enough. Like the guy got his head like got his head bit off and when the guy gets his head bitten off, um, bl practical blood starts bursting out of the, out of the neck. So that's a pretty gory uh, death right there. And as for the woman, the guy is a uh, woman, um. She tr she tries to get to she gets to a boat but the fish outs, um, flips the boat sends her to the water she tries to swim but uh, just gra grabs her and kills her. But like I said like I said the CGI on the fish is not good CGI it's still well even from 2004 it's still not good CGI it's not it wasn't it wasn't compared to like the later years. Uh. Compared to the later years of sci-fi, where the CGI is just downright awful, god awful CGI. <laughs> but, but but even so, from 2004, it's still not good CGI. Still, regardless. <laughs> and so, and then the character Roland, um, he lures with he lures he lures uh, one, the one with uh, bait, one with a fish, and he actually does kill one of the fish. <laughs> And they like kid like cuts out its heart or something and goes and wants to grill it for barbecue. <laughs> um, so he has like, oh, hey, hey, that's some that's something. They like goes and eats 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 the eats the killer fish. Like kills like, he cuts out its heart. Now they get some that's some practical right there where he actually cuts out the thing and starts grilling it on the on the grill. But actually, then another one pops up and kills him. Sadly, and. Anyway, then I didn't expect I didn't expect this death right here because um, the the woman that was the, the um, Tori Kittle's um partner, she actually gets killed not by the fish but because the character Ricardo um had a, had a shotgun, and the place gets set on fire by uh what was it gasoline or something, and the fire leads up to the shotgun, and actually actually sets the gun off and actually shoots her in the face. I was like. Oh, that that was an unexpected death. Like gets like half her face, like gets like right here, gets like blown off. I mean, it's funny because she's she's right here on the cover with our lead guy. But you think that she's good, she's good, like like the second lead, but actually she dies really enough. So it's like, oh, okay, he put her on the front cover right here, but that was an that was an unexpected death. That took back when I first saw it, it took me by surprise. And it's like a decent, like, bo a gory uh, scene where she gets, like, half her face gets, like, up here gets blown off. But then, find, but then you find out, um, also, um, yeah, you do find, you find out that, um, these, uh, fish are genetically engineered fish of, uh, of snakeheads, which, those are, those are fish called snakeheads. They are kind of, like, um, carnivorous type of fish. But they've been genetically engineered. The reason why, because... For hunting, because there's this guy you see this sort of villain. He's a hunter, so he paid for these genetically engineered fish, so he so he can hunt these things for the sport of it. You know, because it's something like this that's never been done before. So that's kind of like a generic thing. So that's the reason why these things are huge because they're genetically engineered. And then um, more with a good gory kill is that actually the mother. To the girl, um, to one of the the girl, she gets her like her lower half like taken up, taken like say bitten off. I was like, oh, you know, that was like a, okay, that was another gory scene. Like, like her lower her lower half is taken off. That was that was an, a a gory death. And then our guys come in, and like the other guys come in, and one of the guys actually right here, or, or, or that I recognize this guy right here. It's, it's actually a uh, was a uh, Mark Mark Boone Jr. Yeah, Mark Boone Jr. I've seen him. He was in Thirty Days of Night, 
and I have seen uh, some other minor supporting roles in other films, but yeah, I remember, I remember him from 30 Days of Night and some other minor roles. <laughs> and so, um, so the guys, they, of course, they get, they, they, they get knocked off the boats, one guy gets, another, another bloody scene where the guy, one of the guys, he gets, one of the, oh, they're not called Frank, they, call, they don't say the word Frankenfish, they don't say that though, but I'll call them that. The Frankenfish flees one of the guys into one of those, uh, they, they come in at one of those, uh, fan boats, and one of the guys, he gets, he gets flown right into the fan, really enough, and that's like kind of a, blue, a bit of bloody scene right there. So you did get to do some get some gory deaths in this film, like head bitten off, like flown into the fan, or the one the girl got her half her face blown off, and the mother gets bitten half. So you get some good, decent gory deaths in this film. Um, then another guy who just they're talking, and then a second just comes up and just grabs that, bites that guy's head into the water, and um, they shoot, they shoot at it, they wound it, then they uh, get on the boat, they follow it, the bloody trail to this. So like a, like a cave is like made out of branches and stuff. It's dead though, but there's actually one more in there, and then that guy, Mike, Mark Butcher, he gets like swallowed off screen. You hear, oop, and then the early guy, Tori kills. He gets out of there, and then the, the hunter, he gets his ass eaten. And another one guy that's uh, the, by the character they name Dan. He's with the the two the remaining two uh, like Tori kills and the uh, character played by Katie Uber Uber Ubert. I mispronounced the last name. He gets thrown off the boat and lands in some mud. But the Frankenfish still keeps on going. And so they both jump on the boats and let the, the, the fish, the, the giant fish, uh, fly uh, right into the giant fan boat. So it gets packed of pieces, bloody bits by the fan. And then ends with uh, the character Dan. He's still stuck in the mud. And... And then there's the little, the little baby, little baby um, frankenfishes or snakeheads. They go and attack him. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, this is much, this is one of my much more shorter review because it's a simple, it's a simple, it's a simple basic um, sci-fi type of movie, B, B movie. So, but honestly, I'd rather from the from the from the director of Spawn, I'd rather watch this in Spawn. Because yeah, as, as a the lead guy, Tori Kittles, I thought he did a very decent job. Um, but I know if, as as far as sci-fi films goes, characters in sci-fi films are now really memorable, sort of kind of forgettable. But with the but the, lead, but the lead guy here, Tori Kittles, I thought he did a very um, decent job in the film. Like I don't expect with like the the girl the girl China Chow. I didn't expect my first saw us. I didn't expect all of a sudden she died because considering. She's right here on the front cover, thinking that these two are the leads, right? But actually, no. She, uh, plot twist: she gets sh actually gets shot to death. She gets shot by accident, though. But yeah, I, I just don't think that it wasn't that bad. Not a bad movie. It's better than some of the stuff that comes out in sci-fi nowadays, which the CGI is much god awful. But it's like the but the, it is an excuse like the CGI doesn't hold up nowadays. But but the, I overall did not mind the film. I rather watch this in Spawn from the director of Spawn. No, I'd rather watch this than that. Uh, but the lead guy, Tori Kittles, I thought he was decent. Some good, a uh, couple, a few uh, gory deaths. And like I said, not expected death I didn't, I didn't see coming. But, um, yeah. I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's just, I'd say it's an average sci-fi film. So yeah, but it was a, a sci-fi film, I just, I, a sci-fi film I did not mind. <sighs> but yeah, but Frank and Fish... I didn't. I didn't. I think it's. I think it's a very. I think it's. A, I think it's a decent uh, sci-fi time waster. Yeah, it's an average time waster, I would say. But as I said, as a whatever one would review consider I have um, for review for a killer fish film. I haven't reviewed in a, quite some time, so just uh, bring one of those genres into this. But yeah, so this is my little quick thoughts on uh, Frank and Fish, average time waster at best. But thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next uh, review for Halloween month. Later.